Gladys Manriquez, the aunt of Melanie Ramos, and family attorney Michael Carrillo. Thank you both for being with us tonight. And Gladys, of course, we are so sorry for your loss. Thank you. What are you, Gladys, uh, what are you and the family hoping comes of this lawsuit? What are we hoping comes? For sure, justice. Um, maybe for personnel to be, you know, I don't know, trained, um, guided, um, to be more aware, you know, do more sweeps in the schools, check restrooms, you know. I'm not saying, ever, like, they got to be, it's hard to be after each children at all times, but at least, hey, every 30 minutes, every hour, checking that, you know, kids aren't just hanging out in the restrooms. You know, there's kids that, oh, I need to go to the restroom, and they're just trying to get out of class. Michael, uh, we know it's one thing to say they should do policies differently, or maybe we learn more the next time. It's another thing to say, like, they did something legally wrong. Uh, what is the legal case here, and how difficult do you think that's going to be to prove? Sure. Well, thank you guys for the opportunity. Um, the case is basically a negligence case against the LA Unified School District. And what we state in the lawsuit and what we're going to prove at the trial is that the school district, the employees at that school at Bernstein High School, knew that drugs were being sold and consumed inside the bathrooms and on campus at school. So therefore, the school district, and particularly at Bernstein, they had a legal duty to prevent future incidents. They had a legal duty to make sure that drugs weren't being sold, that kids were protected and safe on campus. They didn't uphold that duty. When you have six prior incidences of drug overdoses on campus at Bernstein, where school staff has to call emergency personnel, has to call ambulances to come and get kids and make sure that they're alive, that's when things need to stop, either from the top, from the LA Unified, the heads, all the way down to the Bernstein High School staff. That's what we're saying that they could have done to prevent Melanie's death. You know, we're talking about a 15-year-old little girl here that went to campus, just like any other 15-year-old, expects to come home to her family. She didn't get to do that. Yeah, so devastating. Gladys, what we've learned about Melanie is that she was so communicative. She was very open and had this really open dialogue with her parents. So she's really like the last person that you would expect this to happen to. What is your message to parents? How are you turning your pain into purpose? My message, like I've always said, is I know we're all busy as parents, work, home. Take 15, 10 minutes out of your busy day and communicate with your child. Ask them questions. Hey, how's everything going at school? Hey, is anybody offering you this? Or even to talk to them about drugs. And it's not only fentanyl, there's other drugs out there. Educate your child about drugs and not to take anything or be peer pressured by anybody or to try to fit in. That is a message to parents. It's maybe pay a little bit more close attention to who our children hang out with, what are they doing. Um, pay attention to their school surroundings as well. Michael, how do you balance um, the school's responsibility and the child's responsibility? Sure. Well, at this school, you know, drugs were rampant uh, all over campus. This place was a, a drug haven. And so, when you're dealing with that kind of peer pressure coming at you from all angles, you know, we're dealing with a minor, a 15 year old girl. And so of course there's a uh, personal responsibility, but there's also responsibility on the adults on campus to make sure that these kids aren't being exposed to these dangerous chemicals, dangerous substances. So, you know, in this day and age, this could happen on any campus, any school, any other 15 year old. It's important to educate our kids, of course, but it's also imperative for the adults on campus to act, to prevent, and to talk to the kids as well. 
Well, Gladys, we know that the family has established a GoFundMe, so we want to let our viewers know if you would like to help support the family, you can log on to GoFundMe and make your donation there. It's the Melanie Ramos Fund. Gladys Manriquez and Michael Carrillo, thanks again for your time tonight. And again, we are sorry for your loss, Gladys. Thank you. Thank you, guys.